uh, present this evening uh, as, as the board except for at the moment for uh, Mrs. Dumas, who should be here shortly, and Mr. Uh, Blanchard. Also present are um, Mr. Corsi and the town planner. The agenda is as follows. We'll have approval of the minutes from April 10th. We have no A&Rs this meeting. So following that, we have a present and informal discussion uh, on the redevelopment proposal for 9 Holland Road. Then the town planner update and old and new business. So you have before you the um, draft minutes for the April 20, uh, I'm sorry, the April 10th meeting. I hope you all had a chance to review it. Let's see, we've got four of us here who can vote. Okay, so um, does anybody have any corrections, amendments, edits? There being none, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Chamberlain, do I have a second? Second. Ms. Waters, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Okay, it passes four to zero to one. Mr. Kind of abstaining here because he was not at the meeting. So uh, I think our presenters are all set. Again, as we have no ANRs this evening, we will just go right ahead to um, the informal discussion regarding the development of Nine Holland Road. So I would ask the proponents to please introduce yourself and tell us what you want to do. Hi, Frank Bicari with Burton Engineering uh, here this evening. Um, engineer, uh, along with John Real of JR Associates, architect, and Douglas Rowan, uh, prospective developer uh, owner. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for meeting with us this evening. We're here just to give you a brief overview of the property. A lot of you are probably familiar with it. Uh, so it's Nine Holland Road, which is this property right here, uh, existing mill building uh, on the Quinnebog River, located to the, on the east side of Holland Road, just south of Route 20, which is up here. Uh, the next picture I'm going to show is just a zoom in of the same thing, but basically just can will show. Uh, it's also in your in your pamphlets, but just show the condition of the property. Um, you know, it hasn't been used for a while, and the property is starting to get kind of run down. Uh, vegetation starting to climb into where there was uh, gravel parking areas. Um, it's a approximately eight and a half acre parcel total. Uh, the developed area is about four and a half acres. So there's about four acres that have been undeveloped on the property. Um, four and a half that have been developed. We're proposing to redevelop the four and a half acres that's already been developed. And right now we're not proposing to disturb the remaining four acres. That's something that we'll um, touch on a little bit later, but I think there can be some good synergies with the Trails Committee, with the budding properties, properties that are owned by the town, and how we could possibly integrate those remaining four acres. Um, so that's the existing condition. Uh, elevation drops down from the road down to the river. Uh, there's a fairly abrupt bank along the river where you drop uh, six to eight feet. Um, and there's also an approximately 10 foot grade change between the roadway and this lower elevation uh, as you drive down uh, to the existing building. Uh, so what we're proposing for the project, um, let's skip the existing conditions. What we're proposing is uh, redeveloping the property with two buildings. Uh, main building here, which we're proposing a drive under parking. Um, and then at the roadway grade up by Holland Road would be office space. Uh, second floor would be condominiums. And then right now, we, um, when we get to the architecturals, we're showing half of a third floor of uh, also condominiums. So uh, drive under parking in the back as you come down uh, at grade office space, uh, followed by a second floor and third floor of condominiums. We're also proposing a secondary building um, that would house a cafe or a restaurant in some retail space. Uh, we're part of the commercial tourism uh, zoning. This is considered the western gateway into the commercial tourist corridor. Um, and so we wanted to provide a, a good mix of uses uh, with office space, residential, retail, and restaurant. So this gives you a kind of a little bit of everything. Um, some of the other site features are just additional parking to support uh, both buildings. And uh, an area right here, I basically took the, the southernmost disturbance edge of gravel pathway and offset it uh, 15 feet to have a river walk corridor. Um, this hasn't been designed yet. The idea is to have a swath basically along the river for walking trails, some benches, seating, and uh, potentially continue it 
um, on that remaining four acres to potentially integrate with the existing trail systems. Uh, the Grand Trunk is farther down Holland Road um, as you approach Dowdy Road. And so the idea would be that we would work in conjunction with the Conservation Commission and the Trails Committee um, to develop what this Riverwalk corridor would be. Um, at the end of your packet, I have a picture of something that I had kind of pictured in my head of what I thought it might kind of look like. And we'll skip to it right now, and we'll get back to John's building afterwards. <laughs> So th this is kind of the idea that I had for the Riverwalk Corridor. Um, I don't think we would want this much impervious as far as um, how overall wide they have it. Um, but the idea would be to have one um, paved pathway that would be accessible, so handicap accessible, and then probably a gravel um, remainder of the area. So you'd have a gravel pathway and a paved pathway. So you have a long pathway where people can walk along the river and join the trail system. So that's the idea for the river walk. And again, we'd be working with the town in conjunction to see how this would get developed as far as that corridor goes. Um, we don't have a hard proposal for it yet. We just have an area set aside for it. Um, so I mentioned quickly the, the buildings. So this is the, the larger building that we're proposing. We don't have a rendering for the secondary building. It would be a similar architectural style, but this is the predominant building that you would see from the roadway. So this is looking at it from Holland Road. If you've been to the site, there's a little uh, bump out of parking area that's across the street uh, from the site right now. And so you'd have office space, uh, condominiums, and condominiums. And then the secondary building facing this would be off to the right. Um, so as you drive down the driveway, the secondary building would be off to the right over here. And then the next rendering is the building from the backside of what it looks like looking at it from the river. So um, you have your parking at the lower elevation and then your office and your uh, apartments above it. So that's what we're currently proposing. And we're here this evening just to feel out the board um, for the viability of this project. Um, one of the things that we would need from the planning board would be a special permit for the height of the building. Um, our overall height is greater than 35 feet. And so we would need a special permit for that um, to accommodate the height of the building. Otherwise, I believe the rest of the site is in conformance with all your bylaws. Um, you know, we're, we're in conformance with the wetlands bylaws, which is critical on this property as we're abutting the river. They have a 50 foot um, no build. And so going back to the site plan, uh, the 50 foot no build, it shows up kind of dashed in your packet and it's kind of a thin dashed line that's kind of hard to see. But basically the, this build, the smaller building was set right outside the 50 foot no, no structure, and you know the 50 foot follows kind of along this area here, and the bigger building is well outside of the 50 foot no build. Um, you do have a, a bylaw of a 25 foot no disturb. Uh, again, we're, this bottom edge of the river walk would basically be the limit of the disturbed area. So there's existing gravel drive around this area, and so we would be holding that limit of disturbance and not disturbing closer to the river unless it was to do some native plantings or something, some enhancement. Uh, between the river walk and the river itself um, to improve aesthetics and um, improve habitat and you know, species and whatnot that are there, take out invasive species, re replace them with natives, that kind of idea. But that's something that, again, we would talk about Sorry. with the Trails Committee and with the Conservation Commission. Um, I reached out to Becky to see if we could get on their next agenda, and so I believe she is placing us on the next agenda for Conservation Commission um, to keep talking through some of these issues. Uh, stormwater, proposing some surface basins. Uh, right now, the there is a lot of stormwater that goes through the site. Um, the stormwater gets collected on Holland Road and is discharged through the site. There's a canal outlet here that is picked up uh, on the other side somewhere and discharged over here. So there's a lot of stormwater running through the site. Um, there's not a lot of water quality enhancement or detention uh, as part of the old mill building. I think they just put it in to get the water away from them and put it in the river. So. Um, as far as water quality, we'd be looking to greatly improve the water quality through the stormwater management system. You know, and I, something like this basin right here, I'd want, you know, it'd be nicely planted and basically be a site feature um, along with the water on the river. So this area over here is already cleared um, and it's just gravel parking area now. And the idea would be to leave that gravel, um, potentially overflow parking um, or trailhead parking. Um, and again, this area hasn't been committed to anything yet. It's kind of a placeholder right now that's already disturbed, but those were the ideas of how we would move forward with that area. 
um, either add addition, some additional parking or leave, leave it as is, like I said, for trailhead parking. Um, yeah, right, so I, yeah, you open it up to a question and answer. I think that's... <laughs> I was going to ask a question. Could you go back to, can you just show us, is well, that the driveway in is the current driveway? Is that yes, the location? the current driveway comes in right there. So okay, so could you go back to the site, this existing site? Yep, yeah, so here's the... Sorry, I kind of skipped over the existing conditions plan here. No, that's okay. Oops, looking, looking at the one. existing site one. Like, I think the second... Yep, so the existing driveway is right here. Okay. And if we go to the aerial photos, you'll see it as right, well. Right, that's what I was looking at. Yep. So again, on that aerial, so whereabouts... Okay, so that whole building's going to come down. You're going to go into that driveway, so... Yep, so there's... The, the condominiums will be on, all in there, okay. Up here, and so yeah. we, we come in, drive down, and then once we get to that lower elevation, we'll come over and then be underneath the building that's okay. going to be here. And then the secondary building, well, so because of the grade change, we'll need a retaining wall okay. for this uh, uh, other part, this parking area in the secondary building. So you'll basically be driving down and then across and um, secondary buildings over in this area. Mm -hmm. And then this is what I had shown as the potential uh, trailhead parking, gravel parking, overflow parking, some sort of parking. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, uh, part of the reason we're here this evening is because of the, the special permit uh, was required for the height. If we don't have that third floor, we probably don't get the square footage to make the project financially viable. And obviously, you know, um, we'd love to improve the site, but we also, it needs to be financially viable um, to do that as well. And so we wanted to get, if we could, uh, just a general feel for the project from the board, if that's something that would be reasonable to ask as far as the height. Because um, if it's not, then you know we're kind of done. To be honest with you, if, if it's a reasonable ask, then I think we could move forward. Um, and so that's kind of why we're here to present this to know to have a handle on um, if it's something that we keep pursuing or if it's something that you know the board members feel that is at a, at a scale. We think it's a good project. I think it would be interesting to see how that um, that height, what it looks like in comparison to the Milliard and then the Blackington. Do you okay. Know what I mean? Like those comparisons would be nice to, to have because those are the other big buildings. Yeah. And, the, and the building that's there now because that would give us a good yeah, sense. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, if it's the same height it, as what's there now, then right. I don't think it is. Well, it's bigger than that. Right? Yeah, I think it, it's, it's definitely taller, taller than what's there now. That's part the of that building came down was that. four stories high. So right. I mean, that's only half that building. That's only half the building. Yeah. So it's definitely taller. So that's. Oh yeah. Yeah. But it was actually, a whole mill building, yeah. Like Charlie exactly. says, it was at least yeah, four stories. Right, that's what, yeah. and that's not there anymore? No. No, uh, they took off the, no, the top gone. floor. It's been gone. No, no, the whole thing yeah. is gone. The whole well, building is gone. Oh, the there's a building gone. there where on that, top. Where, okay, yeah, there's, there where that, that concrete was the bigger part of the mill building. The what was left was it. a smaller yeah. part. Okay. Yeah, a lot of this has been demoed mill building since this aerial photo was taken. In the 70s. Yes. But based on the elevation from the... The street level. Yep. Yeah. You're saying that the building would be over 35 feet, but how, as you're going down into the property, yep. about how high would it be at the street level above street level? That's what I'm trying to get at, I guess. And there are two. And myself. actually, there are two yeah, street okay. levels. One is the Route right. 20, and then one is the Holland so Road. I'm thinking from from, yeah. from Holland Road. Yeah. So the first floor is, is 10 foot six from here oh. to here. Then it's. Uh, so ba basically, each each floor, from floor to floor, if you're looking at this site here, yes. um, is basically 12 feet. All right. So up to that point uh, would be 36 feet up to where he has the arrow right now. All right. So now basically, it's the towers that are over. It's the towers, right? That are right. over. Yes. But yeah. from from it's Holland down. Road, are you? Is it down how the elevation so does it go down yeah, about? The, the elevation actually yeah, it does yeah, drop down. The elevation down. change of the road from the beginning of the building to the end of the building is probably six to seven feet. Oh, okay. So, but we set the building back a bit from the setback, so that way we have room to fill on one side, right. cut on the other side, and it, it's not going to be per. It'll be level. There'll be a level walkway in front of the building, but there will be some grades in the islands. But, see, the road I'm, the that, but I'm thinking too perspective wise as you're driving down, either right. one way or the other, like how does it look? Right. You know, when you're right. well, it's going to look fairly level because again, we're going to have to right. fill, you know, so the road will slope 
but the building will, will be, we're not going to step the building because of the parking. No, I understand that, but I'm thinking just in comparison right. to sure. what your streetscape looks like. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, because it, seem, it would seem right. to get taller as you go down. There. Right, no, but I meant in, like. From the street. From the street, you're stop. only going to be oh, looking right, yeah. at the yeah. Yeah, top. Yeah, if you're at top. this far end of it, yes. And as top two floors in the towers, you probably. Right. Yeah, so I think what I'm trying to get at is how overwhelming is it going to be overwhelming right. in that site or because it does you know, not yeah, you know, because right. you're not changing the elevation. I think it's almost like that bottom floor is you won't see it up the difference right. for the height and the elevation of right. the piece of land. Right. If I'm correct, from the street, it seems that way to me too. Over, will, right. it, will you be well? The building actually sits down. Into the condos? Well, Rather the street the it sits down. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it will be a, a little, little bit. A little so bit. Yeah. Oh, it does a little bit. Feet. I'm thinking now that like the building, six feet. the building, is the building will sit down now. about eight feet eight from feet. the street. Okay. For that, for that uh, floor right there. And the existing right building is two stories. The grade drops down, so right. the building actually sits down lower. Right. Yeah. And then as the street comes from le uh, right to left, it actually will be going right. downhill to yeah. catch so up with the building on the other end. Right. So you won't get the full effect of how tall it is. Correct. Because of that, yes. but it also That's won't be so sunken that you're looking at the rooftop, right? Right. 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 Yeah, they're right. not going to see That's all the point. HVACs yeah. and. Right. 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 Oh yeah, no, you definitely won't be seeing the roof. All right, yeah. so Mr. Kind of so Concerning the height of the building and the towers, at one point in time, the fire department did have some constraints on what they could reach, and I think that is far less now. The answer for that won't come from this board. But probably from the fire department. No, we're, we're all set with that. So if you recall, when we revised the commercial tourist district, we actually put language in the bylaw that says that building heights of greater than 35 feet or three stories may be allowed by special permit. When it's determined the location, scale, and characteristics of the proposed land uses on site, design, siting, and scale of the structure is in harmony with the surrounding properties and land uses. So as with any other site plan, the fire department will review it to make sure they have sufficient access. But no longer is that limiting height an issue. Um, we went through this most recently with the 40B um, mm -hmm. affordable housing development that was approved for 152 Main Street. They had some significant heights on some of the buildings and the fire department was able to work with the applicant to make sure there was sufficient fire apparatus access. So I would expect the same situation here. So you know, you made the comment initially that that would be a, a limiting factor for you. Well, yeah, if we were to, yeah. yeah, getting that third floor because again, it's the square footage yeah. to justify uh, the cost of the building type of thing. So especially where it's recessed from the road, so it doesn't appear overly tall. Right. right. I think that uh, you might get some good feedback on that. Correct. Positive you. feedback. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain, any questions? Um, is there any, uh, the, the parking lot across the street on Holland Road. Yep. Um, this kind of. Right. Is that, was that still part of the property or was that? No, that's in, I don't think it's part of the I was property. just wondering if yeah, there was going to be any use for that or. No, it's in separate ownership, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, I know it's and I think at one time that was part of yeah, the property. Yeah, 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 I don't think it is anymore. I think okay. it's, uh, I can double check that, but I don't think it is part of the property. And uh, as we move forward, I, I mean, I, I'm fairly familiar with the property, and mm -hmm. and I actually I think the the bell tower was even taller than that. Oh yeah, the fire bell tower. Mm -hmm. If we can get some pictures, that that would help. Yeah, we have some. Of everybody else ideas. out. So from the old the, building. You from mean, the old that's building. That's what I was thinking. The bell that's yeah. at the fire station was on on the bell tower on top of the old building, mm -hmm. which was even taller than taller than that. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, the scale scope of this is much bigger <coughs> than what used to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Much smaller, is and it? The, uh, much nicer, oh, nice. much smaller. Yeah. All. It's, yeah. it's a much better shape than what we And it, this is the only height variance on this building. The other building is just a single story? Correct. Correct. It's just a single story. Yeah. Yeah, the, the smaller building, it's too small to justify an elevator, really. <laughs> you know, we could have made the footprint smaller, but if you, once you have the second floor, you have an elevator, your costs go up quite a bit, so that's why it's just... And I know it's very preliminary, but yeah. I, I just think... Um, you know, as we move along, you know, obviously you got to put some kind of sidewalks to get from one bill into the other and everything yeah, else. Yeah, mm -hmm. You know, I left room with the parking setbacks. I left, I think, eight to ten feet between the parking and the building to have sidewalks. And I was thinking of it, but again, the nature of it, we just didn't get that into detail because yep. we ended up chasing well, I understand. <laughs> I understand. That's all I have. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Jones. And tell us a little bit about the second building. Is it what, what sure. type of uh, use would be there? 
Yeah, so we're proposing uh, a cafe and retail. So we had the middle area as a cafe and then two retail spaces and then an outdoor patio that would be adjacent to the Riverwalk corridor. And what would the square footage be on that building? Uh, on there, so uh, I forget the 21, 16, and 13. Did you have it in here? Is this is total square footage. Uh, Proposed building. I don't remember if I totaled it. Retail, I don't think you did. Around 5,000, is that sound right? Mm -hmm. 6,000? Yeah, you got two. Yeah. And about the same height, same design, did you say? Yeah, yeah it'd be similar. Between five and six thousand. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this would oh, be the same architectural style. So I think if we were, yeah. you know, you're looking at it, it would be something like that, you know. Because it's a one story. Yeah, it's a yeah. one story with the, you know, a nice yeah. main entrance, and I don't know if there would be some. You really don't need to. It's yeah. too small of a building, yeah. but it'll it'll match. Everything will mm -hmm. match. Yeah, the idea so would be that it would be. You wouldn't really want to particularly notice the building from the road all that much. Mm -hmm. you know, the idea is, you know, some of the idea of it is that it's people using, walking on the river, and they can stop, they can continue on the trails, they can possibly park and do some trails, and as well as, you know, the apartment buildings. You know, people, they get up, they want to go have their coffee by the river type of mm -hmm. idea. So that mm -hmm. was, we were trying to integrate it with the idea of the commercial tourist, you know, wanting the mixed uses. And so that's, you know, I think this building isn't a real profitable building, but I think it helps support the site, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the revenues on the square footage that you're leasing here. But I think it, it adds to the, it's an, an amenity for the property, I think, as mm -hmm. far as having that use there. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not a necessarily profitable building, but I think it's a good use. And I think it, it will help sell the condos as well, that you mm -hmm. have that right, right next door to you. Mm -hmm. And can you go back to the elevation of the building? Please, thank you. Either way. I'm curious why you stopped the third floor short of the rest of the building. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> parking, <laughs> parking, 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 parking. parking. Par oh, because you the originally square originally we just had the, we just yeah. had the two floors, yeah. and then we okay. we added uh, the top floor uh, as as much as we could to get. Yeah. the parking that yeah, we had about the, third iteration so. of this. the first iteration <laughs> had basically two of those buildings and you know we tried to make the argument with gene unsuccessfully about shared parking <laughs> and overlapping and whatnot right. and really we just didn't have enough parking with the two big buildings and so we kind of went down to one building and then we had extra parking so we kind of that second building used up some of our extra parking so it's been kind of a back and forth um, that's how we got to here. That we ended up having, to, we wanted to use all our parking, um, so that third floor, and, and just the viability financially to have those extra units makes the, the, the project more viable. If you ask me, would I like to go across? And I apologize for interrupting, but I would say, yeah, I'd love to add those extra units. And if we did that, then we would probably need some retail space for the parking. Mm -hmm. so that's why we said if you could add a half a floor, because in the lending business, it's not a project that's sort of like financeable. Mm -hmm. So I could not have a tour that direct lender was into the non-depository bank, and I can't fund my own project based on the fact that I can't sell to the in the secondary market. So one of the issues is when a town suggests that you, you know, build 50% this way or 50% whatever way or whatever the means that you guys would consider and would sincerely appreciate. We're not a, we're not a, we're a high-end builder. I don't know how to build, you know, stuff that's not really good quality. So what we were trying to do, and, and these people have been great to us, and you have a, unbelievable uh, people that you meet prior to that, that make you feel comfortable enough to come back to a town. Because if a town's not progressive, that's the last town I want to be in. Because they're just gonna drag me out, drag me out, drag me out. And inevitably, it costs me a lot more interest, and at the end of the day, I just wanna know, I'm honest, I'm ethical, a business person, and I'm not, I, I'm not part of the out I call, I do a financial inspirational radio show every day, and I tell people, look, I'm not part of the LSC club member, I'm not a lucky sperm club member, I didn't inherit anything, so just like all of you people that probably started with nothing, <coughs> after they you earned, that's what my wife and myself and my son came from, so 
that's sort of who we are. So we were trying to be gracious to say, okay, mm -hmm. people wanted a building that was sort of going to blend in with the rest of the building. I apologize because of my show. I'm, I'm a little hoarse, and I apologize. But um, we tried to present something. You're, you're looking at probably easily $8 million, and not mm -hmm. more. So we obviously have to get the, the value out of it. And probably the other downside for us is we have to knock down the building. Whereas if someone bought, you know, kept that building, like you said, I want to rent it the way it is, then you guys have been looking at this thing for 23 years. I'm told by people <laughs> that have actually called my show. Because I've talked about this, about the fact that, you know, if the town is, again, not progressive, they, they're not, they're not going to get the high-end developer that wants to try to bring the higher-end tenant. So, and that's sort of what successful developers do. You try to get the best. If you can get, I have mostly national tenants, but if you can get national tenants, banks, like I have TV Bank, uh, Bank America, so Sprint. So when you try to get those type of tenants, that's great because you know you're always going to get paid. But at the same token, if you don't get those type of tenants, the people that are living on the second and third floor, do they have any issues with office space on the first floor? So, and, and so that's why uh, uh, it takes a small little local bank to say, yeah, maybe I'd finance three of these units or four of these units because they don't want the risk of the whole property. So that's why this is a, a sort of like a risky project for us because, you know, we can build it. That's not an issue. We want to be able to either lease it or sell it. So when we originally came to the town, we spoke to Jimmy about basically, you know, leasing it because what we were, we were trying to do is we buy uh, properties for long-term, uh, you know, rental use as well. And what you had, what we were told is that you guys have, like, just to give you an example, an engineering firm, whereas they basically wanted to come in, I guess, but they couldn't find housing. So if someone wanted to come here for, let's say, a year, two years, or whatever, do they have the type of housing? that maybe they used to at their particular city that they live in or whatever. So what we kept that in mind when we developed, we really did, we kept that in mind when we developed it because she had asked, said that the town would prefer to keep the look of the building um, as, it, as it is. This is my wife, Kristen, by the way, I apologize. I, just <laughs> I didn't realize I, when I told my son, you know, I gave him this site plan, so I didn't even realize that that was in here. I thought he just added that in there, but it's really there. <laughs> Lending is used last year at this time was we do gauges from one to 10. Lending was at an eight. If the economy's so great, why is lending at a two? So we're going into a recession. I've been saying this on my show in, in about six months, and I know the market, I could be wrong, maybe it's a year, but now we're starting to hear the market talk about a recession. So that's why a lot of developers are putting you know, properties on hold. But the residential real estate market is still strong because you still have a lack of inventory. Out of 13 million modifications that would, were done in the last eight years, and my wife and I had a company because of my show, we would bring in a lot of people to try. I, could, I'm not, I wasn't going to let big banks roll over a six-year-old and take their house away if I could help them. So we used our radio show to leverage so a lot of these people. And we helped over 400 people not lose the roof, you know, lose the roof over their head. And the only reason I'm telling you this is because eight and a half million of those 13 million properties, these people are being foreclosed on for the second time. So it's pretty, in other words, they got a 2% rate for five years, and now their rate is doubled. So that's why you're going to see all these properties. And this is from Fairly May and Freddie Mac, so this is legitimate information. I bring it up because the markets will be flooded when you'll see what's happening now in Boston where prices are stabilizing and they're not going up any further. Maybe there's towns that have a little bit more room to go, but that's what started going on in the marketplace right now. So we went from an eight to a two, and the economy's boom. It sort of doesn't make sense. So we're starting to see, again, the market sold off today. So we're going to have a real hard time doing what we call end loans. So if anybody has any suggestions, that listen, you know, this is a really beautiful building. We, you, when we go in, it depends on what the town says we'd like to have to look at the property. So John is a really, and I've done a lot of properties, he's, a, he's an excellent architect. Uh, some architects work with you, some architects are stubborn, can't insult them because they sort of get too insulted so they don't want to work for you anymore, but John at least can put up with good criticism. But he did, he did it, he, we felt he did an amazing job for this. And 
So that's all we tried to do is bring the project down. Boy. <laughs> because how many, how many, when you look at it, and I say this with the most, the most respect, I truly do. I don't mean any. I just, I'll just leave it at that. With the most respect, how many people have tried to develop this property and have been unsuccessful? I sort of don't know what no means. I know what yes means. I don't know what no means. But we're pretty tenacious. In other words, no matter how many how many problems we run into, this project will be successful, or we wouldn't be here. So you're not going to be left with it, with something that's you know three quarters finished or not. That is 110 percent, you know, up to the standards of the town, up to my standards, my wife's standards, and. That's how we develop properties, and that's why we get some of the best tenants because we have good properties. Thank you. We currently own the property that was across from Spags and Shrewsbury. I have a mortgage company called Drew Mortgage, and then I have uh, Bank American TV Bank. It's about a four and a half acre parcel. So that's what we're trying to do here, but in a different manner. We, we're not good. And, and we try to get national tenants. If I could get national tenants for the office space, I would do that. But I think you're going to see in the next uh, five years. This year, you're going to see 7,000 places that are retail sites that will be vacant. In five years, they predict 70,000. So I'm sorry for the education in real estate, but I just wanted to sort of let you know what's sort of going on in the market. Because it's important for you guys to know as well. It may not affect your town, but it is going to affect a lot of towns when you have that kind of influx. That's a quarter of a million properties per month. And if anybody's in real estate, you know there's a shortage of inventory. But like in Boston, we're at hit a peak, and I have an office in the North End, so I know the market. Prices are like coming down 200,000. Someone's asking a million two, they dropped the price under a million. When would you ever see that in the last five years? You wouldn't have seen that. So that's why I say the market is changing, and you know, as a real estate developer, you, you, know, you have to be smart about your business. And if you're not, you know, you're not going to get finance. We don't really depend on financing to build the property, uh, in it, but we do depend on financing to get the end loans for the clients that would buy the property or the, or the you know, people that would purchase the property. So that's a concern to me. So what I'm going to do is call around and say, look, this is what we're trying to do with this space. You know, space. Would you guys finance it? Because I, I, I started thinking about it, and then we've been running into where the market's been tightening up. So, like I said, one, one big investor, Ditech, they wanted to do one building we did in Boston. It was over a million dollars and up on the condos. They would do one, one condo. We went to try to sell them a second condo. They wouldn't buy it from us because they didn't want the risk. Now, that's a big, big bank, Ditech. So, to say, okay, we just want one, we don't want two because it's too risky when you've got that many units. So that's all I'm saying. The market is changing, and so all we're trying to do is to present our best leg forward, but at the same time, it has to be profitable. So we're just asking for you guys to understand that part. Mm -hmm. And I need to, to make sure that I make a million dollars or five million dollars or 20 cents, but at the same token, you know, we're about trying to come into a town and we become part of the town as well. We become part of the chamber. You know, we might open up an office here, or a mortgage office, so we might open up a, 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 a bank here. So that's what we're trying to you know, do. It's not that it will be first class when we're done. So thank you for listening to me, and I'm sorry to just talk uh, to you. <laughs> thank you. To add that. Thank you. My Mr. Buddy. Chamberlain? Yeah. Could I get a clarification? Sure. The first floor of this building will be office space? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, all right. I thought somebody had said it was going to be all condos. Oh, no. But no. just the first floor is all in office. Office and or retail? Okay, so it's, yeah. as, as of right now, the first floor is all office space. Office and, and retail. retail? And retail. And retail. Well, and or retail. Well, there's retail okay. down Retail is down only in okay, the, so the small just building. Office space. Okay, just all office. office. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. But the arched windows, is that parking? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to uh, no, the yeah, I on, the, on the other floor. drawing, yeah, you'll see it. Go back to the other. I one. thought the first floor was parking. No, well, no that's, that's first. Right. That that's that's there. really in the basement yeah. level. Yeah, oh, so okay. That's so you can see right in the center there is the is the garage door going into that parking area, and then there would be elevators at each side and stairways going in the towers, bringing you up to the other floors. Oh, the last oh okay. So those the stair towers. Sheet. 
Yeah. yeah. And then, just a second. Ms. Dumas, yeah. are you all set? Or did no, you? but I interrupted. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. okay. Just go ahead, Ms. Chairman. Uh, 1,200 1, square foot uh, residential units. So is that one or two bedroom? Are they going to be all one bedroom? Or two bedroom and three bedrooms. Two bedroom and three bedroom. Right. Okay. Is there a breakdown of that? Yep. You know, oh, not yet. Just, not yet. We, okay. If you say to us, yes, you, we're going to allow you to build that third floor, then we'll give you the breakdown in five minutes. I'll sit <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right, good. Okay. Thanks. I'm just you know. So there'll be one, two, and three bedrooms. Is that what you're saying? No, two and three. Two and three. Just two and three. Okay. Two and three. Yeah, he needs to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ms. Dumas, I'll come back to you. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I was just going to point out that if you didn't have the towers, you may not need a variance. But if you take the towers away, you don't have that those architectural elements that make the building special. Correct. Well, it's a special permit, not a variant. So a special it, permit. Yeah, the district does allow for the height, but it is special permit. So it, obviously it's not a by right yeah. thing. Right. Um, yeah, we'd be a foot off. If you're if you're 12 foot story to story, you're, 30, foot you're 36 off. feet. So we're, we're right there. And I think you want, I mean, that type of building, I think you want the high ceilings. Yeah. Exactly. If you right. took so those off just so that you yeah, and if you got want, the if, height if, or came well, still, sir. Well, have stairwells and elevators. And I think if you take that off, it becomes far more boring building. To yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's attractive how you yeah. add the hip yeah, the style. And the, mm -hmm. Yeah, the towers are nice. And it kind of mimics a little bit of the old buildings that are in the town. Right. So that's like nice. Like the bell tower and the yeah. Right. Tower. Yeah. yeah. A question for you as far as the site and the contamination. Are yes. you going to look for grants or mm -hmm. well, so, how, how um, are you going to clean it? Um, I discussed it with Becky that there was uh, a violation back for a stormwater issue and so I think there there is an outstanding order of conditions on it that they had corrected a stormwater issue so we would be looking to demo the existing building remove all the existing building and totally upgrade the stormwater quality from a site perspective so um, on the rendering the site rendering we showed a couple of surface basins um, you know so I think you know the grades all come down and so we proposed a good sized detention you got three base in here, one, one here, here and, one there. and one here. So uh, the idea that I was kind of picturing in my head is that these would be treatment four bays and then this would be, you know, kind of a wet, a constructed wetland type thing to really get the good biological nutrient removal treatment and then have this spill over into the river. Because right now there's a lot of drainage in this area that all discharges to the river. Right right. Some of it's treated, some of it isn't. So. But is that what you're asking, Ms. Dewey? Are you asking for I just, for I thought it was a contaminated site and when you start digging right, and testing and right. soil, okay. the soil so testing, if it's going to come it exorbitant. No. I don't think it ever no. feels no. like 20 when you do. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, no, not, it, it doesn't have contamination okay. that I know of, no. so. There's okay. been an environmental assessment and it's really not yeah. uh, oh, okay. kind of the doom and gloom that everybody thought over the years. So the oh. previous right. owner had an assessment done. We have a copy of it downstairs if anyone would like and to look at it. And we'd be doing test borings anyway prior to the, you know, for the design of the foundation. So we, mm -hmm. we know exactly what's in there, and that report would be brought forward to the mm -hmm. to the board to the, mm -hmm. the ability department. Mm -hmm. well. And if there was remediation needed, then we'd have to do it as part of the project. So. Mm -hmm. uh, we know you're going to fix yeah. the uh, drainage because you yeah. have to. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's We're all going to make that's it. That's just <laughs> a conservation <laughs> riverfront, and yeah, that's something we know we have to do. And again, that's why I gave you big or gave the project big basin so I'd have some real estate to to make sure we we did it right. So. Mm -hmm. okay. I would just say that I think that to take it and get it closer to the height by removing the towers would be detrimental to the aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So that's why I would lean in the direction of saying that the height would be a problem. I like the multi-use. I like the architecture. It's nice looking. Thank you. Mr. Conniff, anything else? No. Um, I like the drawing. I think that you've done a great job. I think that property is just dying to have some something nice put there and it really you've done a nice job with this I know I'm getting way way ahead of myself perhaps but the materials that you're that you're using look like you're using brick it will be brick it yeah. will be brick It'll be a brick veneer a real brick veneer right yes yeah. it will be a steel frame uh, structure uh, with uh, stud walls in between the, the, the steel beams and columns and then that would have a brick facing on it right and the um, I'm just wondering about um, how impervious this, you know, you're, uh, this is all going to be asphalt, is that what it's going to be, or? Yeah, right yeah. now it's proposed just asphalt. Okay, yeah. okay. well that contribute, or? 
uh, so to the to yeah, the runoff issue? I'll, I'll have to do the calculus, but there is a fair amount of impervious just with the existing building. Oh, there is, there. okay. And so it's not going to be a complete offset, but that's again with the stormwater basins. We'll, we'll mitigate any yeah, increase in impervious. We'd have to provide recharge the and then we stormwater to attenuation. To okay. Because we're all, it's going to be the Conservation Commission, so the stormwater No, you don't have to worry it's hard to tell with that property now. It's so overgrown that well, I think that that's a lot of it. Up at, up at the far end, 20 end, is right. all, there's a whole concrete pad up right. there. Yeah, that is still kind of there. Yeah. Right. One thing I didn't really mention too much was, you know, so we'd have a walkway come down with the grades here are fairly steep. I think on previous submittals to the board, I think when the CBS was going in, they had, because there is a, a gated off access way right here. Mm -hmm. We're not proposing anything here just because of the proximity to the intersection sight lines and all that stuff. The only thing that I was thinking is that, you know, possibly emergency access that we provide through here. You know, we, we have two ways of getting in and out. Uh, and these are basically at existing driveway locations. Um, but we would be closing a driveway over here. Right. Um, and, you know, possibly gate it just for emergency access. If the fire truck needed to get through the gate, they could they could come down. But There's that's a fire hydrant right there too, so that might not be a bad idea. So that was you know, just so that's mm -hmm. what this brown area was, which is meant to be gravel. And that would, you know, they could possibly get a fire truck down there. So that was the thought process for that area. No, I I agree. I like the towers. I think that that really <coughs> does make the building, and I think it it has a rendering that looks similar to a lot of. Other projects that have been done, done in Southbridge and so on, that with old mills that have been done over throughout New England, I think this lends itself directly to that too. I don't, I don't have any other uh, questions, but thank you for the information. Ms. I just have one question. Sure. To the right, there's the white fence on the top. Right. What's that for? And that would actually be a, an area for a roof deck. <laughs> Where they'd be able to go out, it'd be a, a, a seating area out there um, with the uh, planted over. potted uh, landscaping okay. that could be left out year round. Be one on the other side as well to balance. No, it? just on the uh, back side because it's away from the street to get away from the noise and the traffic of the street. So it'd be it'd be better to keep it towards the back of the property. So would we be able to see that fence from Holland Road? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you would. Yeah. 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 Yeah, to a certain degree, yep. Well, the only reason it's white is <laughs> because when we did the rendering, if we did it black, it blended in, and you wouldn't have seen it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. the only reason it's white. Right. Well, that's the only thing that I noticed <laughs> that we might want to talk about a little bit. All right, the black, the black fence, although I would have to say, I don't honestly, pretend to be the expert. Honestly, the, the white fence is like the least, I haven't driven by that for so long. I'm at it. <laughs> that white fence is the least of my concern. <laughs> but I do like the idea but those are the life. things we oftentimes do. I know, but I do like the idea. Can I follow up on that? Because I was going to bring it up, and I figured the crowd would sigh because I tend to bring up the details. But I'm going to say I was going to ask you if, if, design, if design review said that the finish should be the same color as the trim rather than white, you wouldn't be opposed to that. Absolutely. I just figured I'll ask Jean later. <laughs> How about those? May I also ask about a lot of times these big buildings need, I'm not sure what they're called, maybe condensers or things on the roof? Yep, the HVAC units. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this going to need to have that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they'll be, they'll be low profile. So they'd be up on the back side at the top right. on the back side so you really be part you wouldn't of, you, see you it. wouldn't have the angle to see them right so that's right. they would be uh, from yeah. the street you wouldn't see them because yeah. right. it'll still be high enough when you go by on route 20 right you should yeah. be right. looking at the roof right thank you yeah, sorry I, I don't want to get yelled at by the gentleman that. for that we, we when, when we sat down I think you, we had talked, was, there was another lady that was here, and she was the conservation lady, right. and she was suggesting that if we did the roof, then at that point there were different segments, and I think Frank had mentioned it as well, where you could put regular real grass, and, and then at that point people could have, I don't, 
I, when Frank said gas grills, I was surprised because I have a condo and a project where you, you, they don't allow that type of stuff. So I don't know what it's allowable or what, but Frank didn't think it would be an issue. But so we would do that. A lot of times, if anybody's been to some of the you know, nicer hotels in Boston, they'll have uh, restaurants, so to speak. They'll have like glass areas, and then they'll do their fresh fruits and vegetables and that sort of thing. That's sort of what we were really trying to do with the roof. So if we had 25 or whatever units, then how much, you know, what space could they have? That's one of the things that she had brought up, wasn't it? And, yeah, it, and it was if you had 25 I was referring heads. to an actual green roof as right. part of the I water right. mm -hmm. And I kind of you. shut down the green roof um, mm -hmm. from an engineering perspective in that to do a green roof properly, you actually have to bring a lot of soil and a lot of water up there. So you add a lot of weight to your roof, yeah. which makes your steel bigger and increase your cost. So I think the, a better idea versus the green roof would be to do roof deck patio type yeah. idea mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. potted plants and stuff like that to, mm -hmm. to bring some life to it, to create a usable space. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's going to be nice up there. You're sitting out after work. Yeah, it'll be a nice attraction. Rear view and whatnot. So it's a, it's a nice amenity to yeah. sell the condos as well. Yeah. Good. Thank you. The town deserves something that's, you know, like, I know you guys work really hard. People don't Thank you. Money, but, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys don't really get... No, no, it's fine. You guys don't get a lot of credit, really, for what you guys do. You give your time. You don't charge for your time, and you do the best you can to hopefully the best projects come through Starbridge, so to speak. We're from Westboro, and that's where my wife grew up, so we decided to build a house there. But the point being is that when we develop or developers go in, it's just becoming more difficult. And we're not looking for, for any pity party. We're not here for a pity party. We're just here to tell you that, you know, when you do these type of things and you try to bring in really nice projects into town, mm -hmm. at, as people that really work hard to make, and I know she does, I can guarantee it, because we've been <laughs> three meetings. She makes herself available anytime she can. So you guys have great management in Shrewsbury. I deal with the town managers, building inspectors. So we've been doing this for a little while. My only, sorry about that, my son's a little, but my point is, is that I assure you, if you people like the project <laughs> and we could work something out, whereas we gave you something, maybe you'd give us something. So it's like horse trading, so to speak. In other words, we're trying to make this thing profitable, and we're just asking you guys to say, you know, again, the thing is that the site's been vacant. That has nothing to do with it. The site could be vacant another 20 years. The right project has to go there. And we didn't want it to look like a hotel. And that's one of the reasons we used to maybe answer anyone's question that might have thought, you know, why do you have those? Because Jeannie had asked us to try to emulate some of the look of the town and, mm -hmm. you know, doing what she asked. If someone asks me, if someone in town says jump five feet, I try to jump 10 feet. Because I want that person to know that we're trying to do the best we possibly can to obviously get our project approved. Make no mistake about that. But at the same token, be respectful to the town that we're putting up a project that you guys are going to be proud of. I'm done. I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. How many Thank units, you. condos? 24. 24? 24. Is that what? Yeah, with, with, we're thinking approximately uh, uh, 16 on the second floor and then on the top right now, it'll be eight, but you know, we could increase that obviously if we increase well, the at top the floor. table here. We'll give you, you give us. No, no, no. Kind of for each of us. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> we, Possible. We're not going Possible. off that bridge too far because <laughs> yeah. we are only you only get I'm what fooling with you. <laughs> you only get what what, uh, what we have available. And we only have what's available according to the regs and the bylaws. That's as far as we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Mr. Lantern. You know, I, I really think it looks like a terrific project. Yeah. Um, it would be a perfect use for that site. It would really mm -hmm. be great. And I think the building looks really, really good. And uh, I hope we get to that point where we have discussion about whether you should have should a have wrought iron fence right. or not. Right. But, right. but I, I do think that you know yeah. the concept behind the whole the idea of the, of the, you know, of the zoning <laughs> change point, <laughs> is yeah. you know that it is by special yeah. permit. It, yeah. it is an allowed use of a special permit. And certainly anything that can be done to make the project su uh, successful, I hope we'll be able to do. Because, I mean, it, it, I think it would be an, an outstanding project for the town. We truly, we truly want to build that. I have a I microphone. Like yeah. I just want to leave you with this in closing. We truly would like to build this project. And we're just, down, we're just being honest with you. You know, if I came here, I would just say, please respect the fact that I'm being as honest as I possibly, I don't know how to do anything else. I don't know how to lie. I'm just being honest. Uh, and I'm just saying that, you know, in order 
for anyone, whether we paid cash or whatever we did to build this property, you have to be able to sell in the secondary market. And we understand right. that. Thing, and caving. And, we, is, yeah, and, we, so and I would say we want to, uh, as a board, this is a site that it's a priority site. It's a site that we want to see developed. But again, you know, we, you know, I, to be fair to everybody, we need to st we stay within our regs and our bylaws, and we'll do what we can right. um, to work with you. Thank you and do that because I think this is something, you know. It, it, we're not asking for anything. No, and that's, that's not my impression at all. We're not asking you know, for I think you're asking for what's within, you're well within the bylaws, et cetera, and our regs. Um, I do I have just a, had one other question. Okay, now. I'm sorry. You mentioned like 1,200 square foot condominiums, but you're talking about two or three bedrooms. With the three bedrooms, do they get larger? I mean, isn't 1,200 kind of small? We're probably going to run between 1,000 and 1,200 depending on the layout oh. once we get to that point. So. Okay. okay. Um, I have a question. Can you go back to um, this yep. image there? Thank you. Um, the purple. Are you doing yeah. a, is that a sidewalk? Yeah, I apologize. I didn't really explain that very well. So I labeled it 20, the 20-foot 20 commercial tours and corridors. So right, that's what I was Right. The idea behind that was to essentially have a walkway, a level area, okay. and a buffer. Again, part of the buffering is to, you know, the grades of the building and whatnot, right. to, so we have some room between the road and the building to make up our grades, but in that area, I'd want to provide a level area, because, you know, commercial tourism corridor, you get people walking from one thing to another. You know, right. you mentioned, um, was it, I forget the name of the building, Black Blackington. 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 The Blackington Building, and there's parking right here, yeah. and people might park from the Blackington Building here, and they might want to walk down, you know. Right. And part of the, you know, one of the things that Jean iterated uh, with us was the town's master plan, the I commercial agree. tourism, and you know, there is a lot of information on your website that studies that have been done, um, you know, and, and those studies, a lot of it was in increasing the streetscapes or improving the streetscapes, okay. you know, whether it be with benches, with nicer trash receptacles, reducing signage, all those types of things. And so the idea of the commercial tourism corridor was. Again, like the Riverwalk was to be something collaborative to work with the town on what is that. You know, from a developer standpoint, we're probably not going to put in everything the town would want to see as far as all the benches, all the stuff. But we'd be working, have level area, and then if the town, you know, as part of their improvements, you know, we'd get going to grant easements and stuff like that. So that was the idea behind the tour commercial tourism corridor as just a, a working entity and, and a space to work with the town. Um, that Plus, you have a lot of people that jog too, and it's right. nice to keep them off the street. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, I like the, the the idea of being able. One of our other um, concepts that we want to do is connect yep. to the river, et cetera. And so to have that connection from the sidewalk right. to do and that. And I would also say, um, as someone who does walk that road, it is you know that is not a pleasant. Right area t to try to get out to Route 20 from Holland Road walking. But you know, you have, there's an awful lot of people up in, even in Heritage Green, who I know walk down Route 20, and it is not, yes. it is dangerous. So to even have the ability to come down yep. Summit Road there and cross over and to get out to Route 20 from there will be, I would think that would be a huge right. so you'd have advantage, a yeah. Essentially you'd have a walkway up to this point, and then right. And um, then maybe the town or somebody would, you know, improve it all the way to come to the black right. parking yeah. lot. Yeah, so I understand that, but at least it's around, a it's a start, and it goes around that corner. And as I say, I I know personally that that is the hardest place to figure out on either walking or on a bicycle, right. how to get across to 148 or across one mm -hmm. to Route 20 or go down Route 20. Um, it is difficult to do. And so, you know, that will make it that much easier. Mm -hmm. And I think, and also anything that will then connect Route 20, if you're gone Route 20, and that's what we want to encourage people to do is connect right. down to the river. Well, you get them to the intersection, to the light, and then, yes. it, then you can have the crosswalk right. to get across. Right. And yeah. that would help yeah. walk across the top. And the other thing we didn't really get too much into in, is this remaining four acres and then yep. what would happen with that. Again, right. that's something that we would look to work with the Trails Committee and the Conservation right. Commission Right, because you, you, as you come down, because you'll you come down almost, I'm not sure exactly where your property ends, but you must well, come down to almost where you're across from. Ends right here. Okay, so you're not quite across from the uh, trailhead. No, the trailhead's uh, it's further down. It's down like but again, that so at least start. gives people, gets yeah. them Towards that. Well, and I think this is, I think these two are town owned properties. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, so we can get you to the end, and then on the town owned property, you, you 
Okay. Right, and and those are things that are being working on by the Trails Committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I I'm happy to hear that the board likes this because I I too like this. I think it fits in well. Can um, I follow up on something you said, Sandy, before yeah. you wrap up? If it sounds no, like that's it. fine. Um, another one item in our plan, like you said, the streetscape is street shade trees okay. is there yes. going to be room for those with that yeah, walkway yeah. so the, 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 the purple area that you see on that plan is 20 feet from the edge of the existing edge of pavement yeah. oh so yeah 20 feet to work with so, so you could put in feet. some so that, street that, trees so that and a sidewalk some of that is in the right of way some of that is on private property i just basically took the edge of pavement offset 20 feet and said this is the commercial tourism corridor let's okay. figure it out but, mm -hmm. but it looks like even with that you've got some green space too to put some yeah so it, the idea was to provide enough space that we would work it out as we advance okay. the project right. Right. So great right. thank fun. you all right so i mean again it doesn't sound like anybody has a particular issue with the special permit right. sounds like we're all um, on board with the design um, i think this to me this sounds like you know we're all happy with this project you have I would say yes minor relatively there are issues that we'd like to see addressed sure. but they're not I, they don't sound like anything to me is a deal breaker in any way um, so yeah, I appreciate that. That's kind of the feedback that we were looking for. Is yeah. Well, I mean, does that sound it, like it, what everybody's hearing? Yeah. No, 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 I, I'd say so yeah. that would have been thank just you. as helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I, really appreciate sure. I mean, that's what that's what I'm hearing. So I say thank right. you, and we look Great. forward. Right. Thank you very much. To seeing this project go forward. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Good luck with it. Yeah, like oh, I'm sorry. Did, did you did, did you want to be aggressive? Oh, I'm no, we're just I'm just stating that we're gonna we're pretty aggressive, so we're gonna move very quickly on this. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you so much. Actually, before I start, nice. I would probably just leave him for them. Here with him. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Right. Okay. Thanks. I wanted to. Yes, I'm sorry, Ms. Bubon. Oh. I'm sorry. Excuse Wait. me. Oh, hold Excuse on. Me. Hold on. <laughs> the town planner wants oh, to. Do <laughs> 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 you want to say something? I'm sorry. Kind of what you pay me to do. Sorry about that. That's all right. I just want to say that, you know, we've come a very long way on this plan. You know, we started out with. I don't know, was it 200,000 square feet or 100,000? 100, 100, 100, yeah. okay. So we've come a long way. And it's, you know, it may look like a really large site, but it's a very constraining site. And I think they've done a great job with what they have to work with. And to go back to, you know, Frank's kind of kidding. Well, we tried to get Gene to allow us to do some shared parking. But we just, <laughs> yeah, we can't really seem to find the right opportunity at this time for shared parking. Right. If we were able to come up between now and submittal time, with some different ideas for parking, then that third floor might be able to expand a little bit. But given the constraints that we have, you know, we're already putting parking underneath the building. It's been a little difficult. And if there's the opportunity to look at ratios, maybe if some of the one bedroom units, maybe lesser parking, you know, we do have that flexibility in the bylaw. But at this point, I just don't have that level of comfort. But as usual, I'm ready to, and willing to work with the applicant as we go forward. I think too that the, the idea of shared parking for this kind of a project, particularly when it's residential, I'm not sure in this in Sturbridge, people don't like to walk right. real far to things. So I don't think that you'd want to park and walk far. There's I mean, not really anywhere to park no. right, and walk and walk. walk. So, yeah. But you don't want to. But again, for your residential, I don't imagine that people are going to want to. You know, park. You think they're going to be under the building. Right. Yeah. yeah. You have a condo. You want so to I think. So I think. But you know, the idea of shared the parking could be difficult. The only shared parking I could see would be whatever that is across the street. Um, that's something that we'll investigate. Yeah, and that's not a, that's not even a lot there. That's not a big lot. When you have a parking space, well, we have a, we owned the condo before, prior to we still own it, but. The, the, when you walk in, when you say shared parking, there was obviously one tandem. Car, tandem, in, tandem. Called, in tandem. So one was here oh, and one okay. comes oh, in back. So I don't know if they have that length. Do we have that length for that, or we'd have to check it out? I don't know. We, no, no, no. We don't have the length the building, in the no, first level. The building level. just fits no. right. uh, tip standard parking layout. So okay. yeah. That's a good idea. Though. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. Well, thank you. Again, thank you very much. And we look forward to it's probably important. Thank you. Thank you. It's probably important for those at home that there is a public hearing process because this yes. is a good job with this is an informal. Again, this is an informal discussion. Yeah.
Right. So good at Next time it'll be a PowerPoint, so I'll just have to hit the space bar versus <laughs> clicking around. <laughs> Somebody would be kind of. Yeah, I hope. So we're not part of it. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I don't. I want to take Because we could get a second one, right? Gina will make me. I can give up mine, and we'll have the one for the file. Okay. Did you mark in that one? No. No, and I didn't mark in mine. Well, I didn't make notes on mine. I've made notes in mine. That's the I only thing. Is that yeah. okay. time to make my notes onto something else? I need to keep one for the file. Okay, that's all right. We can make you. We can make them a copy though and send it, right? Color though. Oh. I can make you a copy and send it. Okay, you can have, you have a business card. Thanks, sir. I've already, okay. I've already memorized that. <laughs> <laughs> We don't we don't play well with others. <laughs> no sharing here. I can send the electronic copies to all the board members. We do have everything oh, electronic. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be um, I do want to just reiterate for people listening at home, Ms. Dumas, remind me that this this is an informal discussion. That this this process has a, a ways to go. That they will submit for there will be a public hearing process. They have to go through conservation. There'll be public hearings, mm -hmm. so the public will have a chance to weigh in on this as well. This was simply an informal discussion for them to get our feedback to know where they want to go to proceed. Mm -hmm. So when they come in for their public hearings and their site plan review, that it's it will go smoother, we mm -hmm. hope, for having and, this. And then when you do a public hearing, you might learn something that makes the project even better by listening right. and right. fixing an issue if somebody saw an issue. But, but for anybody out there who is contemplating projects, doing an informal discussion with us is always mm -hmm. a good idea. And meeting with the town planner is always a good idea because that could save everybody a lot of headaches awesome. and money at, in, in the long run. And also, I should mention, too, that they're um, having the same, a similar meeting with the Conservation Commission, I believe, at their first May meeting. So if anyone's interested, watch the agendas to see. Um, I can't recall the date. Thank you. All right. So, town planner update. I uh, really have nothing other than to say it's open space plan and permitting software all day, all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so really, we had actually we had our public forum. It was a really great turnout. Appreciate everyone who came out for that. The photo contest actually was a great success. We had a lot of submissions. People seemed to like the idea of you know voting, and um, some businesses donated some really nice prizes. We got a lot of good feedback. We are uh, finalizing the open space plan. I would say within the next couple of weeks, we should have a complete rough draft. Our current plan expires May 7th, so we should be uh, well on track to get that submitted to the state. We will be looking for letters of support from Planning Board, Board of Selectmen, Conservation, as we typically do. And then tomorrow is our kickoff for our new permitting software, which I realize it has nothing to do with the planning board. However, um, eventually people will have the ability to file online for permit applications. So they'll be able to pay online, they'll be able to submit online. Um, for instance, if you're an electrician and you're normally coming here and filling out the forms, you can do it from the convenience of your own home and submit them once we have your credentials on file. Um, site plans can be uploaded electronically. Obviously, we'll still need the hard copies of plans. Mm -hmm but we're trying to really reduce paperwork. And what will happen is, or reduce paper, not the work, but the paper. <laughs> yeah. So what will happen um, once we get up and running, which we estimate will take six months or, or longer, we will have our applications uploaded. They will go to all the departments electronically. The feedback will be coming electronically. So instead of everyone having to provide a memo, we should just be able to print a sheet, a comment sheet, and okay. distribute that. So it should, you know, make things simpler. We will have the ability to take uh, one set of plans, for instance, if this was an official site plan that came in this evening electronically, it's uploaded into the system. If now we've asked for some changes, be it to parking or stormwater management or things like that, as long as everything is at the same scale, I can load that in and the system will highlight all the changes. Oh, so it's a good way to verify as-built and things like that. So. 
We know it's going to be a lot of work. They have estimated that Rebecca and I are the main contacts and Cindy in the building department. They're estimating about 20 hours of staff time per week wow. from start to finish of this. So it's a huge investment you of mean, time. You mean start to finish for in getting it up and going? Getting it up and going okay. and doing all the workflow and all of that. So I just wanted to mention it, one, because I think it would be a something great for the public but two to also so you'll know that we're going to be very very busy mm -hmm. so I don't think you'll be seeing a lot of bylaw work. I mean obviously if the prohibition fails on recreational marijuana we'll be working on that right away but for right now our focus really needs to be on getting these projects up and running and once we get moving along then we can start to look at some of the other and in addition to that I have green communities and complete streets and just a few other lofty goals <laughs> this year. I think it would be um, also easier for the people who are applying for some of these things that they don't have to worry about getting here. Right. You know, when you're in, they can do it mm -hmm. when right. it's convenient right. for them, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately. Right. Which I think would be, you know, that would smooth things mm -hmm. out too for people. Yeah. And I know. And I've been here before where somebody comes in and needs a tattoo. Board of Health and they're, they're out on site right. or something and you know it's like oh um, and so I think that would be helpful I think the other thing uh, the Board of Selectmen is looking at this year as one of the goals is uh, reevaluating hours to see if some evening hours could be provided for the public as well so I think those things at least from a permitting standpoint really should help and tag sales, if you're having a tag sale, you'll just be able to do it online and not even come in, which would yeah. be really nice. That will be nice for people. Yeah. Can, yeah. can I ask a question? When you say Board of Selectmen looking at the evening hours for you? For all the all um, town part, offices. Town hall, oh. Yeah, town offices. Well, I would say that you should first try to do it online because that's the way of the future. And they go to so many meetings at night and work so hard that I would hope that we would try the online approach first before you have to come in once a week and work a late day that's just my opinion mm. i think there may be ways that it can work I mean, out it's, there are many towns that do it mm -hmm. and it works out well yeah well maybe if they get friday off well you do that is what yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Right. yeah. Right. Right. And a lot of residents you know do really appreciate the idea that Oh, if it's All a short work week on, on a Friday, night. that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. we, we did it in Palmer a few years ago, and it's worked out really well. We're open long days on Monday, and then Fridays are off, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a different story. I didn't mm -hmm. know if it was just, you know, oh, no, that's adding just a half an hour at lunch <laughs> or something. And <laughs> we, the night. There might be well, a little protest. protest. <laughs> yeah, right. Protest, protest. It's going to be some perk on the other end, right. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Fridays. Right. So... Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the main thing. We do have somebody looking at Sweet Kiwi. Um, there's been a couple of interested parties looking at that. Um, there's been somebody looking at the uh, motel across from Cumberland Farms, but they haven't been able to reach uh, pr agreement on price with the sellers, um, which is much. too bad. The um, I forget pink what it's haven. called. Pink, yeah, the haven. pink haven. The what? It used to be the pink haven. I know. I, oh, I said I've that to somebody, that and I said, you know, the pink haven, the pink motel. I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, I never heard that name. What is it really called now? Heritage or something? Heritage. Oh, yeah. I, don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So somebody's been looking at that. Um, Anything in Paletti's? Anything for Paletti's? Paletti's. No. Well, we had the... Um, the Hard wood stove, uh, pellet yeah. stove person who's mainline heating, who um, could not locate there for mm -hmm. so reasons. Either. There's a dentist going into the InStyle Optical at the center at Hobbs Brook. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and Taco Bell has contacted me again about potentially coming back for that site, but they're still waiting for Mr. Ford to revise his site plan. There's been um, some interest in some of the places that Old Sturbridge Village is trying to lease, some uh, retail and service type enterprises. Um, Country Curtain, anything? 
They've ha they have some interest in that from, it would be an office type use or the village would use it for their own use. Nice. Because it's difficult to, you know, you don't want to alter that building, really. Mm -hmm. Has any, anything happened with Panera Bread starting to build? Panera Bread, I met with Mr. Patel today and um, they've been having some discussions on the grease trap, but he's expecting that within a month or so they should be applying for their building permits. We were we, kind of surprised. We really hurried to get the approvals yeah, done. And now it's we're all kind of surprised that they haven't applied for their building permit yet. And they do uh, have all of the per per permits that have them. Yes, they do. <laughs> they have all of their permits. Um, trying to think, there's been a lot of, act we've been really, really busy. A lot of activity, no applications, but lots and lots of people coming in and trying to review potential projects. So it's been a very busy spring. Anybody have any other questions, comments, issues? There being none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Blanchard, second. Ms. Hart. Any further discussion? Oh, before you vote, uh, I forgot. I just wanted to mention the um, CPCs. Can I still say it now? Yes. CPCs. <laughs> Community Needs Assessment Study is going to be held on Wednesday, May 20th, if that's a Wednesday. No, no it's I'll not. Be the 20, you. That'll be the 23rd if it's a Wednesday. 23rd, thank you. 20, and I'll be 21, sending 20, 20, the 23rd. And the board of invitational letter again. Right. Oh, and that reminds me of one other thing. Thank you. On, um, May 15th at 6.30 p.m. there'll be a presentation on the stretch code um, in Town Hall by Jim Barry and Kelly Brown from the Department of Energy Resources. And I thought it would be helpful. A lot of FinCom members were contacting me with questions. And, you know, let's face it, it's building code issues. It's not necessarily my area of expertise. I can answer a lot of questions, but I thought it would be really helpful if they would come in and make a presentation, answer any questions from finance committee members or any members of the public that might want to come before town meeting to learn about it. So we will be posting that online and we'd welcome anyone to attend and get information from what time? 6.30. All right. Any further discussion on the motion to adjourn? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> there being none, take a vote. All those in favor, opposed, motion carries unanimously. <laughs> Thank you. Whatever. Thanks.